everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Full Court Press presented by Sarah Ford, Rochester Hills. I am your host, Patty Cesarini, and today I am joined with two very, very special guests, Trey Townsend and Jack Olkey. You guys, thank you so much for being here today. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Excited to be here. I know. It's going to be so much fun. But first, before we get started, I want to congratulate both of you guys on outstanding careers. You know, you in total of your collegiate career and then Trey as of, you know, your Oakland career. And I just want to go down the list of some of your accolades that you guys have. Trey, Horizon League Player of the Year and First Team All League in the Conference Tournament Championship game. You joined Kevin Durant um, from 2000 at Texas to be the only players to score 35 plus points, 10 plus rebounds, play 40 plus minutes, a thousand career points. Bear with me. There's there's a lot here and I want to make sure that we get it all in. Okay. Second in the Oakland record book for most games started, fourth overall for minutes played and defensive rebounds, sixth overall in offensive rebounds and total rebounds, and then you are tied for sixth with career double doubles and you finish the season with 21. Jack, <laughs> six man of the year, 1,000 career points. This year for Oakland, you were third in the single season for most three-point field goals made at 137. First in three-point field goals attempted. You passed up Travis Bader. You were first in the NCAA for three-pointers made and attempted in the season. And then most three-point attempts and three-pointers made inside the PPG Paints Arena. Most threes made against Kentucky in an NCAA tournament game. And then, obviously... You tied second for most threes made in an NCAA tournament game with 10 against Kentucky. You guys are like, what, you know, do you, is that, is, are those things like crossing your mind? Probably not, right? You're thinking of all oh. of the, oh. hi, Campy. <laughs> all right, I'm done. Yeah, that's my cue. <laughs> this is crap, man. <laughs> I, I, this Mr. Oakland stuff. All right. I've been here 40 years, and you're Mr. Oakland? <laughs> I've been trying to tell everyone when you well, think of you Mr. Know, Oakland. I've had enough, okay? And you, <laughs> you get 37 threes in, the, in an NSA tournament, and you get all the, I, I've got, nobody's called me to do any TikToks. <laughs> I, I haven't done one TikTok. I haven't done any, one commercial. I'm making no money, and I'm hearing all this crap about all this you're doing, and you, and you, do you think you're the best player to ever play? Do you ever hear Keith Benson? All right. Keith Benson was the mid-major player of the year. The college insider mid-major player of the year. He won the Lou Henson Award, okay? I mean, he did that. What have you done? All right. I was on a team with Jack Golke. Yeah, but he won the Lou Henson. Do you even know who Lou Henson was? Of course. Yeah, one of the greatest coaches of all time, right? Mm-hmm. The Lou Henson Award, all right? I don't know that's, what you did. What are these shoes you were? I saw these kinkos or some type of shoes you were... What is uh, Ufos? What, shout out to Ufos. Ufos. Yeah, what what's happening to my program? <laughs> All right, it's this, they NIL said Instagrams days, yeah. and you, but anyway. So I just wanted to set the record straight that <laughs> you know the Lou Henson Award is one of the greatest awards there is, and Keith Benson got it. The reason I walked in here, Trey, is because you you're getting it too. Are you saying? <laughs> yeah. Congrats, Trey. That's, you are the, that's so you, awesome. It, nobody knows, and you can't say anything. But next week at the that's final so four, cool. they're going to name so you the cool. mid-major player of the year. Jeez. Man, how awesome is that? Oh, Trey? Give me a camp. How awesome is that? And we're the that's only awesome. school. Oh. Oakland's so the only school so ever to have two wow. Lou Henson Award winners. But, Trey, congratulations. That's crazy, man. <laughs> Made me cry, and I don't that cry was, much. That was, that was, wow, that was good. I still want your that money. <laughs> Jeez, that was some good right, acting. That was some good right. acting right there. Jeez. I did not think that's where that was going at all. Oh. You need to submit that film. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, wow. Okay, Sign him up for some acting. Get him some NIL surprise. deals with that acting. Jeez. <laughs> I'm oh just in God. shock. I did not think that's where that was going. So I was, I was, there, like, I was like, so oh, happy. This is just a good little skit <laughs> we got going. We were, I thought we were just like pulling a prank on Patty for the show no, or something. No. <laughs> Surprise. But no, that's Everyone. awesome. That's a special thing. I was sitting there like, why is he going so hard on me? <laughs> it's like, I don't even know. Like, it's not, I didn't know if anyone won it yet. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Congrats. Yeah. That's so awesome. I love that. Oh, my God. Have, can't be at me tearing up, too. Oh, my God. Can't when I, hold him snubbed. I think, okay. <laughs> I think it was when I saw him starting to tear up I was, that that's when it got me. I was like, 
Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I was Gosh. sitting there. I know we were all sitting I mean, I was, because I knew that it was coming. Out. <laughs> what? You guys had no idea that it was coming. I was like, zero clue. I was so I'm like, I knew. What is I knew. <laughs> I knew. So I was sitting there. I was like, <laughs> I, I, although I didn't know when coach was going to come in here. That oh, was, you that set was it up with the accolades, I guess. Uh, it was perfect yeah, time I know. to come to walk in. What stuff. can I say? But Gosh. anyways, now wow. you have another one that's added to your, to your laundry <laughs> added to list. Added to the laundry list. That's that a is special awesome. For sure. I love awesome. It. Yeah, initial thoughts on that one, you know. I mean, I think I'm still a little <laughs> shocked the way Campy came in here and was... <laughs> That performance was so just enthralling. I, I was just vibing. I was like, good. "Dang, like he's right. What have I done? I've, he's got all these great. <laughs> oh, no. no, but it was that's special. I didn't even think that was a possibility for me to get. Obviously, there's a lot of amazing players in mid major, but it's just a special thing that they thought that highly of me and to win it. So it's yeah. I'm, I'm I'm honored. Well deserved. Yeah, well earned, Jack. Well yeah, <laughs> I was just I was just gonna say, obviously, much deserved. Um, I, I've almost felt bad a little bit at this point because I've been getting so much uh, recognition and stuff like that. But Trey's been the leader and the heart and soul of our team this year. So to see him get recognized for something like that, he 100% deserves it, and I'm really proud of him. Yeah, I know. I know, and I was. It's so nice <laughs> to you know be be a part of it too, and to and to be in here and mm -hmm. witness you for know sure. that the skit. <laughs> <laughs> the skit. Very well crazy. executed. That was crazy. I'm very impressed. I did, that not, crazy. I did not think he had those capabilities. <clears throat> Hope well. to see that at the Black and Gold Awards this year <laughs> and the blooper <laughs> reel or something. Probably. If I had to, <laughs> no, if I had to guess, yeah, definitely 100%. <laughs> um, but anyways, getting back to, you know, I feel like it's such a weird transition. Like, how do you go from somebody <laughs> being awarded the Lou Henson Award to just being like, okay, let's revert back to what we were talking about. Um, but take me through the day-to-day -day experience of going to the NCAA double-A tournament, you guys got there, what, Tuesday, right? Yeah, we, we bust in Tuesday, um, kind of just settled in, got our hotel and all that mm -hmm. stuff, and just kind of relaxed, try to kick our feet up and, and get ready for the next day, because we knew we had we had one practice in the morning at Pitt, and, and then one in the afternoon at the actual facility, so just trying to get ready and, and focus up, because there's obviously so many distractions there. Yeah, there's a lot going on, a lot of media yeah. people there, too, and Trey, how did you guys as a team prepare in those in those two practices that you had on Wednesday uh, I think having the two really helped us because we were able to have just a normal practice with no media and any yeah. outside people in there in the morning so we were able to do you know what we would normally do here at the arena for a practice and then camp kind of you know prepped us and told us like this is an open practice you know the media is going to be there you're going to there's going to be a lot of stuff non-basketball related happening at this practice we only got like 30 35 yeah. 40 minutes yeah. on that court so but it was just a cool experience. My whole thing, this, the whole trip was just to have all the guys just enjoy and appreciate every moment of it. Like, no matter what happens, if you get interviewed by someone or anything like that, just appreciate it all because not everyone gets to play here. No. But, yeah, that media practice was definitely a cool thing. And then just seeing all the people behind the scenes, it's it's definitely a, a wild scene over there. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, what was – I mean, obviously you guys have been a part of press conferences here and stuff, but how different is it when – it's a March Madness, you know, NCAA press conference, and there's people and people in there that you've never seen before. It's it was really different after the first game because the press oh, room was gosh, completely yeah. full, <laughs> and it was kind of, <laughs> and the stage for the like the booth was up like a flight yeah. of stairs. It felt like we had to mm. walk up, so we're sitting like above all these people are like <laughs> yeah. way below. So you're like trying to see who's talking to you, looking down, and yeah. there's just bright lights in your face, so you can't really even see anyone, mm -hmm. but. It was. It's just. It was just such a cool experience. You got to feel like such like a, a special athlete. Obviously, everyone in that tournament's a special player to get there. But yeah. it's. It was just such a cool thing. I have so many memories from it that I that I won't ever forget. Mm -hmm. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. For me, uh, the first moment honestly was during before our first practice, our first open media practice. Trey and Blake were in the the media room. He was just describing with Campy talking to the media, but. There was a bunch of Kentucky reporters that came into our locker room, and they all just swarmed to me immediately. I'm not really sure why, <laughs> but they were just asking me like about my game, about what we think about Kentucky and all that stuff. And what'd you I had, say? <laughs> well, that was the clip that they took where I said, "I said Kentucky has the best three point field goal yeah. percentage shooting team in the country, but I think we we shoot the ball better than them." And that's what they clipped. Mm. But it was just crazy for me because you always see those like pictures of maybe it's an NFL locker room, NBA locker room where. A guy's literally just like hounded right, at his locker. Right, it's just people all around. And I had never him. experienced that before, but they were they just hounded me at my locker, and all my teammates were then taking pictures of me <laughs> sitting there. So that was that was interesting. You're like, whoa. Yeah, I okay. will say, like this tournament is where I saw like how like media stories are made and stuff, yeah. because most of the stuff that they made stories about, especially before the Kentucky game, 
was taking so completely yeah. out of context <laughs> just to like no make kidding. a story. Like, because Kentucky thought we were like talking trash about them this entire week, Whoa. when in reality it was just <laughs> someone would clip one thing that was said out of yeah. like an entire compliment towards them, mm-hmm. and so then they just had in this mind, all oh, these guys are the most cocky team we've ever heard in our lives. Like, we're talking trash the You're whole time. You're kidding. Wait, so, so were any? Would, did they say anything to you guys when, like, during the game, like on the court? You know, they were going back and forth, like, yeah, chirping at you guys. Like before the game, and like right. As we kind of tipped off, uh, one of their guards was like talking crap to me, like, like Get you better out. you better make some shots today, like <laughs> <laughs> blah blah blah. And then after I got in, he didn't really say anything. Yeah, so sure. <laughs> yeah, you shut him up exactly. real quick. Yeah, going into that Kentucky game though, how nervous were you guys? Any jitters? I mean, were you even nervous at all? You didn't honestly, look too nervous. When honestly, you got like out there. I was, I was just so locked in, especially like as mm-hmm. our season has come down towards the end. I always try to perform my best in like the biggest moments. And um, for me, it's just like a preparation thing. The more I prepare, like the more time I put in in the off season during the season, like on on my own, the more comfortable I am on the court. So like once I step out there, um, I kind of forget everything else that's going on around me. And I just like in on my teammates and and it's, it's pretty easy out there. Yeah. Yeah. For me, no matter what the game is or like the level of the game during the national anthem is when I just get so nervous. Mm-hmm. It's just that part. Like before the game, I'm fine. Then I stand in the national anthem and it's like my nerves just go through the roof. And for that game, we didn't do the national anthem. So I didn't have really time to get too stressed oh. out and nervous. So I was able to just go out there and play. But it's definitely you understand you're in March Madness. Like you see the logo, yeah. the big logo in the middle of the court. And there's a lot of I, our game was the most watched game, I think, in March. It like was. the first round in like five years. Yeah. And Since 2019 with. Zion at Duke. Yeah, and the crowd that we had, everyone was in there pulling for us too, so it was just, it just felt great to be out there. Yeah, I mean, you had everybody that was in the gym that wasn't wearing blue Mm -hmm. pulling for you guys. Everybody at home pulling for you guys. You got got almost the whole entire country was was literally pulling for Oakland, and especially after that game too, everyone was like, oh yeah, we're rallying (laughs) around Oakland. Like The media just sitting there waiting to push stuff out for you guys Mm -hmm. too. It was just really cool to see and amazing for you guys, you know, to be a part of that. And then on top of that, you end up making history. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) After that game, did any of that feel real or was it kind of just a haze? Yeah, it was honestly just a haze. Like I didn't even really like check my phone and stuff. I kind of just like let my friends handle Mm -hmm. all that stuff. I, I, I didn't want to because we obviously had a huge game coming up next against NC State, and I just wanted to be as focused as I could for that. And, I mean, even now, like, almost a week later, I still can't really fathom that, like, just people in, like, Los Angeles or New York, like, know who I am. That doesn't make sense to me. So, because, like, I'm just a normal person still. Mm So, um, all that (laughs) stuff, like, doesn't make sense. Um, But the one thing that really did hit me is um, during the NC State game, obviously I'm coming off the bench. Mm -hmm. I go to check in at like the 16 minute mark or whatever it is. And I get a standing ovation from the entire arena. And that was just crazy. I was like, these 17,000 people, I just all got on their feet. Like Mm -hmm. when I all, because I stepped on the floor, like that was really cool. It's real. You heard heard in that arena, the first time he caught the ball, everyone was like, (gasps) he like pump faked and sidestepped and the whole arena just gasped. And I'm like, this is crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you were there. You you were were probably gasping too. I was too. Everyone, as soon as you caught the ball, out of their chairs, everyone's giving it one of these, yeah. you know, in the stands. <laughs> and it was it was just exciting. Like all around mm-hmm. exciting the the experience, you know, even for fans to be there too to to watch you guys yeah. just do what you've been doing all season long. And I think that's what's really special too is you guys didn't change a single thing. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. a single thing. You didn't change how you played. You didn't change how you played either. And you just went out there and did what you do best yeah. as a team, you know? And then, yeah, the chips really <laughs> fell. <laughs> like, they fell exactly where they needed to be mm-hmm. in, in, in your favor um, at the end of that game. Um, do you know, Jack, um, the the style of basketball that's played, obviously, now is a lot of live and die by the three, mm-hmm. right? And if you rewind the tapes, you know, back to the 90s and stuff, and I actually looked at one of the stats, this is, I think, um, post-moving the three-point lineup. They were averaging seven three-point attempts attempts (laughs) per game, (laughs) okay? I think this was the 90 to 91 or 89 to 90 NBA season. 
and they would make just a little bit over two. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that's insane. I can't imagine that. <laughs> and you know, but it's just it's neat to see the history of it and see that how things changed allowed you to do mm-hmm. what you were able to do and then make yeah. history. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure obviously growing up playing basketball, yeah. you guys recognize how the game has changed and stuff, but just that drastically in what, 20, 30, 30 yeah, years, 30 right? Years. Like I, I think it's really cool because like it just allows – like basketball is such a diverse game. It just allows so many different types mm-hmm. of uh, players and different styles to succeed out there because – uh, like you said, back in the 90s, early <laughs> 90s, like you kind of just had to fit a specific prototype to be yes. successful, whether it was like a seven foot big man who's dominant on the block or like a player who looked like Michael Jordan who could <laughs> score from anywhere. Like you didn't have a we bunch of different, a bunch of different guys <laughs> <laughs> who uh, who could play different roles. And I think that's right. what our team this year is so successful at is Coach Campy <laughs> took a bunch of guys and he he put them in a very specific role and, and then we were successful in those roles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And how quickly after that game did your lives change? Obviously, you said, you know, I'm not really looking at my phone. But we were all following Jack's Instagram after that game, seeing how <laughs> much, how the, in, the big the increase was of, yeah. of the followers on all of this stuff. But, I mean, I think no one's life changed as, as much as Jack's after that. And we're all mm-hmm. we're all benefiting from, the, you know, that too as well. Like, not just the team, but our university. Like, everyone yeah. is hearing about Oakland. Jack's obviously, you know, the face of it all, but like he's doing, it's such a big thing for this school and the university. So I think it's just, it's a crazy thing. Yeah. And well, yours did too. Yeah. He's getting all his NIL <laughs> deals and stuff, but I mean, come he, on, Lou Anson tagged, Award. He tagged me along in one of his, ad, <laughs> yeah. his brand deals. So I can't cool. complain. Cool. Too, <laughs> Working together. How long, or was it a spur of the moment thing? The, we're not a Cinderella. Appreciate the show guys. Go enjoy it. Appreciate it. We're not a Cinderella. Were you thinking about that? Prior, I wasn't. I wasn't thinking was about like, like I want to grab say, the mic. <laughs> I, it wasn't like I want to say like something special, but it mm-hmm. was like the whole week. Um, I was kind of trying to like instill that in us, just the confidence of like, because obviously you go throughout the week, you see we're playing Kentucky, and um, you can be like, oh, like they're really good, blah blah blah. And obviously they're a tremendous team, but I personally just hate going into a game with the mentality of like I'm not as good as them, or like, you like you, have, you as a competitor, as yeah, athlete, you have to think you're gonna you win. Can't. So the whole time I was just like, we're we're not the worst team. Like I think we played better than them. I think we're better. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> so, so like yeah, I think we're the better team. And and in the spur of the moment, I was just like, I, I want to make a statement here. Mm-hmm. So I guess yeah. I just took so the spur of the moment, it. that was the statement. Yeah. What were your thoughts when he said that? I like the first thing I saw of it was like a gif in an Instagram comment. I didn't even realize he said it. But then when I finally saw the full clip, the way that he walked away and just like looked at the camera and the camp, he was like, <laughs> yeah, was it was Campy's face just, for me. He was like, like <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, he said it best in the, in the post game interview is like what he just said now is like the yeah. mindset. That's really all it is. And sports and in, in general is such a big mental thing that it mostly like, you know, it's, how strong you are mentally on top, like over the physicality of it. So if you're, mm-hmm. like you said, if you're already shooting yourself in the foot with having a mindset that you're not as good as someone or you can't compete, there's only so much yeah. you can physically do at that point. Exactly. And that's what you said in the press yeah. conference afterwards too. You're like, they are they have NBA prospects. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to the NBA. Yeah. That's, that's what you said at the time. Um, but I know I'm going to go out there and I'm going to ball out exactly. and we're going to see exactly. how it goes. What time did you guys go to bed? I was very curious about this. I'm like, no way they're sleeping. Was that? I think we moved breakfast like two hours later that day, yeah, which is nice. But yeah, the adrenaline from the game. I probably didn't go to bed till like three, three thirty. Oh. Yeah, I don't think I fell asleep till like four thirty. Honestly, that whole weekend I was just so like wired. Mm-hmm. I Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. I think I slept a total of less than ten hours. Oh like I was God. just wired the entire time. Yeah, I mean th- <laughs> that that point you're running off pure adrenaline, yeah. just like your own energy. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's just that's what's keeping you going, yeah. really. And then you guys had a one day prep for NC State. Not nothing out of the ordinary. You guys always had one day preps and stuff. But was there anything maybe different about it now that it's, you know, like March March Madness? You know. I mean. No, I think the the thing that made us so successful this season was just our consistency yeah. as a team. You know, we didn't change. Obviously, when we were playing Kentucky, we didn't change how we prepped no. for them. It's just you obviously are preparing for really talented players, but the way you go about it is the same. So we just went about NC State the same way. They played a different style than, than Kentucky did, so we were prepared for that. And then we just 
go on the court and practice. And our staff does a great job having us walk through everything. We had a little mini tape court in our <laughs> hotel ballroom that I'm sure you saw on Jack's TurboTax <laughs> ad. But um, so we were able to walk through it there and on the court. So I mm-hmm. felt, you know, we always – our coaches do a great job having us prepared for their games in short time. Yeah. I mean, you have to. That's just the nature of the beast, yep. too. And then you had to know going into that game that they were going to stick on you. Like oh, yeah. glue, you know? Yeah. So how did you go about that game and just saying, okay, I probably – I don't know if this is what you're – I'm speculating here. I don't know if this is what you're thinking, but, okay, they're going to stick on me. I probably won't get as many open looks mm-hmm. or, you know, be able to create as many as I could have in the Kentucky game. Yeah, for sure. Like, I – like, you, you're totally right. I knew exactly what they were going to mm-hmm. do coming out and – my goal, especially for the first uh, like couple of media timeouts that I was in, was basically just to draw that attention towards me and try to let our big guys, Trey and right. Chris, like get comfortable because um, I know that if I'm having that much attention on the perimeter, then they're going to be able to play one-on-one. And, I mean, when, anytime Trey plays one-on-one, he's going to score 25, right. 30 points. So um, I was comfortable with like what was going to happen in the game, and I was just trying to get loose in transition and stuff like that when they're they don't have the chance to mm-hmm. set their defense. No, absolutely, and you took advantage of that, and then so did you. You know, knowing that they're going to have somebody on him, and nobody's ever going to leave him open. So you know, it um, limits the the amount of double teams that you're going to catch, and you ended up dropping 30 points and 13 rebounds. You know, how nice is it just throughout this whole entire season to really be able to complement each other in the way that you do. I mean, yeah, I've been saying the whole year, it's just the talent that we have, the the depth we have makes Mm -hmm. it so much easier for, I think, everyone to not put too much pressure on themselves to feel like they have to do a lot individually. Like having Blake, DQ, and Jack all out there outside the three-point line, I think DQ is three for three from three against Kentucky, so you can't just ignore (laughs) any of those guys. And then when it's one-on-one, you're only left with so many people, and you have me and Chris down there, and Chris Mm -hmm. has gotten so, he's improved so much over his time here, and as I always say, the most skilled big man I've ever played with. So just having all that talent out there just makes playing the game a lot easier because teams struggle trying to figure out who they're going to guard because mm-hmm. any given night someone could have a special day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you Obviously, you have your consistent – you're consistent guys, you know, you, we know what you're going to do every game. We know what you're going to do every game. And then there's always, yeah, that the rest of the team, you know, yeah. the other three that are on the court, you're like, all right, yeah, exactly. you know, <laughs> we're going to chip in. We're all going to do For our sure. thing. And, sure. and it gelled and it, and it works, you know, and it was, mm-hmm. I think that just seeing the growth and seeing how that all played out from the beginning of the season, all the way up until the end. And what are the next steps for you guys? I I know you said I'm not going to the NBA, but I can't help but imagine maybe you've gotten a little bit of some attention, you know, after yeah, I mean, the tournament. I like I'm always a, a confident player and and um, I believe in myself, uh, but I also I'm like logical and I know kind of what happens and I know the type of players that go to the NBA. Yeah. Um, I, don't get me wrong. Like I'm gonna work as hard as I possibly can this summer. I'm gonna have uh, some opportunities with mm-hmm. to get workouts in with teams and and maybe even get a chance at the summer league. So I'm gonna seize every opportunity I get and make the most of it. Um, but I know I might not get in the NBA this year, and and I'll keep working at it. Maybe I'll mm-hmm. get there in the in future years. But I just want to play professionally and keep building my career, yeah. keep getting better. I'm just so passionate about the game that um, wherever it takes me, I'll play. Yeah, ride the wave. Mm-hmm. Literally, Trey. What about you? Um. The the main dream is obviously to play professional, like Jack said. So I'm gonna you know go through this spring and just w- keep working out. You know, have my body heal up a little bit because <laughs> yeah. oh, I've been getting a beat bit up a little bit yeah. throughout the season. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll rest up a little bit, and then the plan is to go through pre draft workouts and process and just see you know where that takes me, and then um, we'll see what happens there. But just consistently yeah. working out this spring and then just healing up because. Body's taken a beating. I've played a lot, yeah. logged a lot of minutes this year. Yeah, so. over the past few months, yeah, yeah literally got to refresh and then mm-hmm. be able to zone back in. If you guys had one word to describe that whole experience for yourself, what would that be? Like just March, Ma- the March Madness experience. Mm-hmm. I guess I'd say magical. Ooh, was, that's that's a, that's a good word. That is a good one. For me, it, it was, I've been using this word a lot. It's whirlwind. Like, Ooh. I it just all happens so fast. Yes, I feel like I experienced like a year of my life in a week. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, am I aging? I hope yeah. I'm not aging. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already old enough as it is. <laughs> what about the season as a whole? If you had one word to describe the whole season, um. I guess I'll give you two words. I'll say Disney movie, honestly. Disney movie. <laughs> like, it was just such a special season. Like yeah. every single goal that we had before the season started, 
you know, we checked off every single goal, no matter, you know, what anyone thought, how we would perform on the outside. We knew in our, our team what we were capable of. And obviously it was, it was nice having the support of everyone, but we never doubted ourselves and no, no matter if anyone else did. So yeah. it was just a special season. Mm -hmm. That's good. I like that. My word would be satisfying. Like it's, this is the type of season that I've worked so hard my whole career for and everyone on our team ever since they picked up a basketball has worked yep. so hard for and especially once we got together in June. Like Trey said, we accomplished every single goal we set out to and and along the way we made such great relationships and like there's really nothing about the season that we could look back on and be like, I wish that changed. Mm -hmm. Obviously, yeah, we want to win a national championship or whatever it is, but we gave it our 110%, like Trey said, in, in the post game, and, and we're just so satisfied with how it went. Yeah, this it, it literally is something that, and I think especially with the basketball world too, because you can say for any sport, obviously you want to go on and you want to play in, you know, for an NCAA championship mm -hmm. and stuff, but I think the weight that it carries for basketball players is something that's just so much heavier than it is for every other sport, and it really is what you guys dream about from the yeah. second that you pick up a basketball as a little munchkin, mm -hmm. you know, and you're playing on that little plastic rim, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then it graduates and you've got the one that goes over the door, over the closet, <laughs> you know, and it just, it really is. And I mean, that's, oh, you're going to remember that you're never literally, it's impossible to forget, yeah. you know, yeah, 100%. Um, but that is all the time that we have for today. And I want to thank you guys so much again for coming on the show and, you know, giving us a little insider look on, <laughs> on what that experience was like and then, you know, being able to share your stories and share your time at the tournament. You know, thanks for having us. It was mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you yeah. having us and let's do it again sometime. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and congratulations to both of you guys on all that you've accomplished so far throughout your careers and, and you. especially this past season. Yeah, Thank appreciate you. it. And that is it for this episode of Full Court Press and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.